Sometimes I, I forget to appreciate how groovy that song is. Oh, I just had somebody message me on Instagram today asking me for it. We should have a we should have put a pinned uh we should have some kind of pinned post somewhere mm-hmm. where people can just people can get to the song. Do you think people realize it's me? I tell them that it's you. I don't they don't they don't realize that it's you. <laughs> nice. I, I think I think that they think that it's like <laughs> off of some famous comedy C D or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, National Lampoon. Yeah, yeah. Put it out in the seventies. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah. People love that one of song. those like comedy CDs that wins a, wins a Grammy. And you're like, what is this? Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jimmy did, Fallon did a did a an album of covers. <laughs> I'm it's I'm so shocked every time I find out pieces of comedy that have like that were like award winning in their day because it's mm-hmm. like oh this didn't survive even like a year later. Yeah, like that could I very think, well like, be Bob true. Bob Saget won a Grammy in the last couple years. Bob Saget won a Grammy. Yeah, yeah. In the last couple years, I believe so, or was nominated. <laughs> did Bob, has Bob Saget? I guess he has been putting out like comedy specials. I remember that uh, he did well, like some Showtime specials. Yeah, at, at least, but um, I think it's just like, it's like what? Co- well, what comedy is like Quincy Jones listening to? That's what's gonna win, right? That's true. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. <laughs> yeah, so it's like always Kathy Griffin. Kathy Griffin has comedy Grammys. I believe so. Yeah, that's not right. Also, did you know that um, two comedy albums have won Best Album? Which what are those? Uh, Robin Williams, Reality, What a Concept. I could see that, and the Button Down Mind of Bob Newhart. I think those are it. Yeah, I could see those make sense. Yeah, man, people respected comedy enough then that they were like best album ever. Yeah, <laughs> ever. This like, was for the year. <laughs> yeah, like same year as like Led Zeppelin. They're like, nope. <laughs> and that was even before people treated it like it was art. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. I mean, I feel be, like... People talk, like, way high-mindedly about it now. Right. But also, it's completely disposable. I do feel like comedy used to be more of an event. To, like, a comedy special was an event. Like, the, like a Robin Williams special was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Your, people were home I love, to watch um, that. I love watching those old specials where it, like, played in theaters. Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> shot on film. Yeah, shot on film. Yeah. They, like, interview the crowd beforehand. Yeah, like the like uh, like raw. Yeah, like yeah. everybody's lined up outside. <laughs> That'd be funny. That'd be so funny to do now. It's like, are you excited to see Brendan Schaub? I guess. Yeah, I'm just in <laughs> I mean, Vegas. Yeah, I I mean I guess so. Um, the tickets were free. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah. The casino confident. That's every comedy special. Is are you ex- Yeah, are you excited to see Fortune Feimster? It's like who? Yeah, it's like. <laughs> instead of uh, like back then it would be like outside of some uh, outside of like the orpheum or something right. yeah. or, but like this it's like they're outside of just like an airplane hangar that <laughs> netflix has built a fake comedy club inside yeah dude they're in van nuys california <laughs> they're just in like an industrial park mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah that are was you, are you excited to to do this it's like well yeah i mean no one was really calling for rides on uber so i wasn't doing anything <laughs> My car happened to be parked nearby, and I, I saw s- someone with a clipboard. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I saw a line, and I was like, I guess I go stand in it. Yeah. And, uh, you know, what do you know? I'm seeing Patton Oswalt. <laughs> Me, I'm the kind of man who, I see a line, I get in it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and has this led me astray? Many times. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the last time you did it, you got a vasectomy. <laughs> Damn, <laughs> that would be, that sounds like a female trick. Total, f- yeah. Like, <laughs> they just trick lines of men into getting vasectomies. Well, I literally remember some promo, like an actual like weekend they were doing, encouraging men over 35 or in their 40s. This was on WHFS, the alt station in Baltimore. Uh-huh. They were doing something where like for a limited- So they're targeting it based on demo. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, All right, 98 rock. 
Yeah. You specifically, we're going to need you to cut your balls off. They were doing a promotion where, like, if you got a vasectomy, you would get a voucher for, like, wings and pizza from a local pizza place. <laughs> so it's like, go get a vasectomy and then treat yourself to a weekend of relaxation. And it's like, ah, that's fucking, that's really weird. <laughs> that is very weird. Were the vasectomies free? Uh, I, I think they might. I think so. How could they be? It's an elective surgery. Like, who's paying for that? I, I'm telling I remember this vividly. There was, like, a push to get people to get vasectomies. <laughs> Specifically, now I'm thinking about this, this might be some weird, like, like white medical center forced uh, hysterectomy type thing. They were yeah, just like, yeah. yeah, the guys in Bal- the people in Dundalk just, are yeah. fucking too much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, scientists just watching the crowd at a Ravens game, they're like, well, this will not do. Yeah. <laughs> We definitely need less of whatever this is. Yeah, it's there's just a- like a fat guy dropping his hot dog. They're like, <laughs> pause, zoom in, and they circle him, and they're like, this is what we're after. <laughs> yeah, you know like the sky boxes are always reserved? Yeah, That's yeah. eugenicists. <laughs> just up there taking notes. <laughs> Someone with a sniper rifle, and they're like, no. No, 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 no. No, less direct. We'll get them later. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that, you know what's, I really, like, I really hadn't thought about it, but that, it is real, I promise it's real, that's, and now I'm realizing how absolutely bizarre that is, that that was, like, a thing they were promoting on the radio. Yeah, I mean, wings and beer, that's, like, what, 30 bucks? Pizza, yeah, yeah, it was, like, wings and pizza, maybe beer, too, I don't remember, mm-hmm. um, from some local pizza pizza place that's even weirder like that it's not papa john's or something it, mi- it might it's have like- actually been papa john i don't think it was because that would be crazy if <laughs> if a national food chain yeah <laughs> ladies and gentlemen well just gentlemen uh ge- <laughs> gentlemen come get a vasectomy and you will get a free large pie from comet ping pong <laughs> Yeah, Pizza Hut does a special. It's like, the Bigfoot pizza is back, and for this month only, you can pay with your eggs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, yeah, we... This is dystopian. And yeah. About, I'm sure that whatever... Whatever you're misremembering is about to happen for real. No, I'm it... kidding, de- I know you're... It, it definitely happened. I think it's going to happen, dude. That's mm-hmm. Places are going to start accepting, like, you know... Apple Wallet, Bitcoin, and fucking viable. You're yeah. You're gonna be able to just walk up and hand them your plasma. Yes, it's gonna be that like be instead great. of washing dishes in an old movie when you can't pay. <laughs> they just like, hook all right, you up. well, I'm gonna need you to jack off. <laughs> <laughs> and then we're gonna use it to make more dishwashers. Mm-hmm. We have a bunch of. <laughs> we have a, a machine in the back. Yeah, we toss it in there, mm-hmm. and they come out. They're small, but they can do the work. Yeah. You go back and they have various U's already growing and you realize that you were one of the clones. Yeah. <laughs> That's when you feel a pistol pressed into the back of your head. Man, I can't wait to find out that I'm a clone. Yeah. I feel like I definitely, I have like the, we were talking about how I have like pug energy, mm-hmm. how I've, I have all the same, I that was on like that ads. I don't think we even talked about it on here. Um, oh, yeah, that was on the stereo ads. We didn't even talk about it. On oh, that right. Oh, yeah. I I made that private. But yeah, yeah, you have pug energy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> pug energy. Um, but uh, yeah, so like um, I very much I think I'm like if you made a clone of a clone of a clone. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, dude. Yeah. My DNA is just like degraded. It's like it, it's it's like the lineup where like you know the protagonist sees all of his alter egos and then you're the you're like the left handed one where the, you're like uh, he's like oh that's also me <laughs> like there's like an old one a strong one uh, and then yeah, there's yeah. you it's like that old Dexter's movie. yes yeah 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 <laughs> <laughs> wait, hey wait slightly related when does that stereo ad is that out I don't know where is it. On Instagram, I guess. Is it? I don't know. I would like to. I want to know what. Money. Yeah, we got. I. I. It went into my account. I just really want to know what. Or maybe they didn't I mean, we use it at just, all. I'm sure they used it, but I mean, they're not going to listen to this. We can talk about it. Oh yeah. Nick and I. We got paid to uh, for some reason. Coward Hour is getting a lot of weird breaks recently. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we got paid to do an ad for this like app. Stereo. Where, I guess it's like. It's like a uh, chat roulette, but it matches you up with someone and you start podcasting. Well, it's yeah, it's like chat roulette meets 
podcasting meets a multi-level marketing scheme because in addition mm. to and I have a bunch of friends who do it who are like who are like I'm on stereo tonight and they're podcasting for like fucking you know two hours to 54 listeners mm-hmm. and but but did you go to the leaderboard part of it yeah okay so so they're like they're like the more you podcast the more potential you have to, to get listeners and make money it's like cut co knives right and so like they're the one guy the guy who automatically loads up when you get on there I can't remember his name but he's like the top and he apparently makes ten thousand dollars a week I guess he never logs off of stereo <laughs> but like I guess like however many thousands of listeners you're able to net I don't know how you I don't I can't believe that that many people I can't believe a thousand people use stereo you know what I mean and yeah. he, and he's I mean, making like 10 grand a week and then the, it goes down. There are people making like you know you get down to people making like five dollars, and those are the people who have like mm-hmm. two thousand. That's listeners. Tony Hinchcliffe, right? Yeah, yeah. Tony Hinchcliffe yeah. and Jeff Ross were on there. For right? some reason, they're on it, and you can call them. So I was like, can we just call Tony Hinchcliffe and call him gay, dude? I should. Can I make an a, make a notification happen on his phone? <laughs> I should reinstall stereo. I didn't even think about that. Yeah, yeah. Because him and Jeff Ross were chatting, and I'm mm-hmm. like, I guess you can just pop in there. Yeah. Hey, Jeff Ross, I have a question about that 15-year-old. Was she hot? <laughs> I'll take my answer off the air. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> um, but, yeah, man, it's and I guess, like, the thing about Jeff Ross and Tony Hinchcliffe doing that is, like, I was also looking, like, today, Joe Matarese, uh, finally, I guess he finally got approved for Cameo, you know, for so for 25 bucks, you can have a guy do a Rocky impression at you and your family, mm-hmm. and it's just like... Well, that's a good prank on him. I know, I still, I still call, I still occasionally text him in the middle of the night and call him a rat bastard. <laughs> did it, like, a week and a half ago? <laughs> How did you get Joe Matarese's number? He gave it out. <laughs> he gave it out. I guess I'm one of his Adderall binges, you know, hanging out in his wife's pool. There was one day when he was on Facebook, just like, uh, anybody who wants comedy advice or just to talk, text me, call me. <laughs> and he gave his real phone number out on his Facebook page. I bet you're the only one who still has it. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I wonder if anybody else is texting him. <laughs> I mean, probably that's how not, you know. Not even he probably like he gets a text and he's like, "Oh, is it my son?" No, no, <laughs> it's the rat bastard guy again. I mean, that's how you know that you're truly irrelevant. Is like you are you're somebody who's been in movies and on TV, and you put your phone number on the internet, and fucking one guy calls you. <laughs> Only one guy harasses you. <laughs> Only Nick Oldershaw. Just me. Which I, I do have a pension. So many people don't realize that I'm keeping tabs on them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. There are so many losers. You're probably, you probably are the sole consumer of more media than anyone else. Absolutely. Absolutely. Dude, there <laughs> there are so many people who have no idea. There's this guy that I've been friends with on Facebook who uh, moved out to uh, New York to be an actor. Mm-hmm. I think we did some background work on Blue Bloods and then decided that he was actually like a pure-hearted libertarian and that he wanted nothing to do with the industry. He's like, I just don't have that thirst for attention that actors have. Meanwhile, he posts six paragraph uh, fucking statuses on Facebook every day about like the you know the nature like the like what it means to be stoic and why is not with anybody and and, and so, so all this stuff to, to no likes whatsoever <laughs> like like so this dude who doesn't need validation is just constantly just like these thoughts Facebook needs them and I take no less than I would say five screen caps of his statuses a day and send them to my girlfriend much to her dismay. <laughs> Oh, that's the worst is so when you funny. like you send Bay content and she just thinks you're being mean. No. <laughs> this, ha- this happens to me sometimes. <laughs> but, or I'll tell her I'll be like, oh man, I really slammed Lewis in the group chat. Jesus. <laughs> and then I tell her and she's like, Why would you say that to your friend? <laughs> well, you know what's awesome? With me, Bay has that resistance at first and then I think I just have a way. I think I have a, a way about me that I know how to get people excited about things. So <laughs> I've got I've gotten her on board because <laughs> he posts insane shit. He's like he's like he's he had one status the other day that was like women want consistency from me, but the fact is, from minute to minute, I don't know whether I want to cuddle with you or throw you in the bed and eat your pussy until you're screaming my name, <laughs> just like stuff like that. Like posting, <laughs> and the funniest thing is, is like. <laughs> Every once in a while, his mom will comment under the status like, Paul, are you okay? Please call us. 
That is so funny so to like funny. already like you're an actor and delusional and you're moving to Hollywood, but the, to then deep like a deeper spiral where you're like, no, I'm not an actor. I'm actually a mystic. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a mystic. <laughs> it's he has. I'm gonna go up on a cliff and look at hawks. Goodbye. <laughs> Is he, like, jacked but still looks bad? He's jacked. Mm. This dude, I mean, I will give this dude that. He's He's got, he's disciplined in in terms of, you know, being fit, being mm-hmm. physically fit. Um, that is so funny when a guy is uh, super jacked but so crazy, he still doesn't get pussy. Yes, dude, he's so, he is so fucking crazy. He's just, like, he's on Facebook posting about, about how he can't be with anybody because he's become too accustomed to loneliness and nobody will let him throat fuck them the way that he wants to. <laughs> Good God. <laughs> and, and most people like, you know, and, and again, I, like six paragraphs, two likes. Mm-hmm. And then occasionally there's there are some women who are just like, oh my God, I feel this way too. And it's like, all right, well, it's crazy that like even... Good for him. You know, <laughs> somehow you're still finding some kind of connection with somebody every once in a while. Good for it's him. It's just shocking. <laughs> yeah, it really needs to stop. I think Posting. we need to do something about this, man. People need to stop. Po- Not everybody needs to post. Yeah, I just watched... Um, Have you watched American Murder on Netflix? No. Okay, so basically this guy, Chris Watts, killed his wife and children because his wife was being a little bit too much. And before you mm-hmm. see... The- yeah, you know, she was... She was causing kind of a commotion. She was... Re- well, kind of. I mean... Look, not... Sometimes your wife is just a big nuisance and you gotta do something about it. I mean, she would... The, the, it's not good to kill your wife and children. So let's... The, we'll say that first. We'll say that up top, right? Disclaimer. <laughs> but before I saw... Like, I had only seen his... Because uh, I had obsessively watched all the footage of, like, his... Um, uh, like, his trial and the interrogation tape Mm -hmm. oh i'd seen that but this documentary was made it feels kind of fucked up because it's made there's no narration no interviews they just used like handed over body cam footage to almost like create a fiction narrative that's very weird it's like a found footage movie um but what they also use to help create the narrative are his wife's facebook live posts and you know, don't kill your wife, but also, this lady was going live way... Th- I mean, th- there there was way too much posting going on in this house, I will say that. <laughs> like, <laughs> this is this is what uh, Anthony Cumia did to himself. Kind of. This woman <laughs> kind of did, was kind of pulling a Cumia a little bit. <laughs> like, I don't ever want there to be so much footage of me from Facebook Live that you can construct an entire arc about me in a film <laughs> <laughs> yeah you don't want there to be enough footage for a documentary without anyone having followed you <laughs> with a camera yes. yeah and it's not like it's not like she had a youtube channel so like nobody was watching this stuff mm-hmm. this was just from her facebook and like even in the even in the documentary like so many videos just start where like we just like they just start playing the middle of a facebook live video that they, that they did and like chris comes home and he's like Oh, you're filming again. Okay. Like, <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to go to the garage and sharpen something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, not a good, he shouldn't have done all that. But, yeah, he shouldn't have done all that. But, you know, there's two sides to every story. I do think the woman was a narcissist. Like, Again, I mean, look, you can't even, we can't even have this. I should not even be on the air with this right now. <laughs> this is a conversation you can't even have. I know nothing about this. Oh, I'm you should like, wait. I'm just like, maybe it was good. <laughs> Zero info. Well, what's so funny is like towards the end of the documentary, like I guess they got like there were people discussing this case on Facebook and a large consensus of it was, uh, I think this was actually good. I think the Christian <laughs> had every right to do this. <laughs> but it but it wasn't he i mean he he fucking strangled his daughters to death and then threw them down uh you know a big tube out in the desert <laughs> now were they going live no well unwillingly they were th- <laughs> <laughs> now when you say a big tube uh it was it was some fucking uh like a silo or something he worked for some company and like his job was to go out to these like silos in the desert mm-hmm. in like colorado and uh yeah, he just he just fucking he just I guess you know well, shocked just, them. I'll just leave them with all the old grain. 
It's a wild movie. It's a, it's a, it's a good mm-hmm. movie. <laughs> kind of fucked up, but pretty good. <laughs> huh. Maybe I'll watch it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Man, I wonder uh, how much... How much material do you think people would have right now if they tried to do some sort of damning documentary about one of us? A lot. <laughs> a lot. A lot. I don't know mm. if they could do... I don't know if they'd have the video footage, but they definitely have a wealth of audio, and they could certainly get more interviews than I even care to, you know, to mm. estimate. <laughs> Damn, that would be horrible of, like, Coward Hour playing and then just, like, the most sinister photo of either of us. <laughs> It's just me, that picture where I'm glowing red with a mustache. Yeah, yeah. it's it's literally just the photo, like yeah. the, the photo of the podcast. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guess the if either, is menacing. If either one of us does anything, people will be kicking themselves for years because they'll be like, yeah, we thought this was funny. Like, mm-hmm. it was nothing but warning signs. Nothing but warning signs. <laughs> I don't know, too much posting, though. Yeah. Did you um, with with these people who like they they put out this unending content that only you consume? It's like they won at roulette. They're like, well, I could try to get everybody's attention and spread it out. They have all of my attention. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They they bet on zero. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's this one guy who uh, he's got like a YouTube channel, or he thinks he has a YouTube channel. Technically, he has a YouTube channel, but mm-hmm. it's not going to be. He's not uh, laying the foundation for the future that he thinks he's going to have. I'll put it like that. Yeah, yeah. And he'll post on Facebook all the time, like, going live, tune in. And I'll just take screenshots of it <laughs> and send it to the group chat. But I'll just <laughs> I'll just write under it, going live, I'm a faggot. Like that. <laughs> it's not even clever. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I get I get so upset. There's so much stuff I should have saved mm-hmm. that, like, I just thought, like, well, this idiot will never wise up and delete this. <laughs> like, there was um this kid in my hometown who he made the worst music video that's ever existed. Oh fuck! It's it's him doing like artistic like coffee house guitar singer songwriter. Yes, and he's wearing like a hat <laughs> and like. He's in, like, a field, and then it, like, cuts to him in front of a green screen. <laughs> like, oh, my fucking God. It was God, the dude. fucking worst. Um, the song sucks, too. I, I'll just, I'll say it. It was called Materialized Butterflies. Oh, my fucking God. And it fucking sucked, and I would I would just put it on, like, the smart TV at parties. <laughs> I've done this. <laughs> <laughs> Did they know who he was? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> that is so we'd funny. We all laugh. Yeah, man, we used to put some cursed content up on the TV while when we were drinking. I remember that we went through a phase where we would just put um we'd put chatterbait up on the TV and just <laughs> sit there drinking. <laughs> And then it turned into, I don't think I was necessarily part of this, but, like, the bit evolved without me. Like, I was working one night, and then I came over, and they were streaming on Chatterbait, but no one was nude. They were just, like, drinking beers. Oh, yeah, I've done that with friends. Yeah. Yeah. And people would be like, are you guys going to fuck? They're like, no, we didn't upload our IDs. We're not allowed to. (laughs) (laughs) Just (laughs) sipping beers. Yeah, my buddy Paul... uh... When we were still friends, Paul, uh, oh, what the fuck was it? Paul Moser and me pulled up Chatterbait, like, downstairs in my parents' house one night and, like, talked with a talked with a bay for, like, probably a good, like, hour and a half. Mm-hmm. Just tits out. We were 17. It was a very illegal occurrence. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> but, yeah. Wait, were you filming yourself, or? Yeah, we were on camera. Were you nude? No. Okay. Yeah, why? I, I don't know. I was just curious. I was like, were you were you and Paul just sitting on the couch nude watching a bay? No, dude. We were just sitting on the couch fully clothed talking to bay. Okay. Talking to an anonymous bay. Mm-hmm. Oh, huh. Maybe it wasn't, cha- it wasn't Chatterbait. It was the, cha- it was, uh, what's the one? Is it Chat Roulette? What is it? Omegle. Yeah. Omegle. Yeah. Omegle, you yeah. You can do that. Yeah. That mm-hmm. was the one. <laughs> and there was just a topless bay and we were just, you know, just just learning about each other in a really beautiful way. That does sound beautiful. It was really nice. It was incredibly platonic. And that's when I realized that, you know, breasts are not, se- it's not sexual. If you get turned on by breasts, you're gross and you're a baby. So, 
What do you have to say for yourself? <laughs> <laughs> what do you have to say for yourself? But the inside of the asshole, highly sexual. It's pretty interesting in there. There's a lot going on. <laughs> Look, breasts are gross and you're gay if you like them. No, you're just a no. But no. as far into the asshole as you can see with a flashlight, now that's hot. I'm just saying you can that it, it that feels good on your sex organs, but if you're if you're mama milk, that's what you want. You are a child. You're 8. <laughs> and you miss those big milkies. I look he, guilty as charged. <laughs> guilty as guilty charged. charged. I'm a sex baby. <laughs> I'm a baby for sex. Oh my god, dude! You ever baby read... want pussy? <laughs> <laughs> horrible, horrible way. To... <laughs> yeah, you, you, do you ever just try stuff out with Bay? Do you ever just do you ever just like without yeah. warning be like, what if I say this from now on? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> oh, I have a boner inside my diaper. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, having to adjust the velcro to like give yourself more room to be hard. Yeah, dude, you shit, you shit your pants, you shit your diaper just so that she has to take them off and see your boner, and you're like, "Oops, is that bad?" <laughs> Good God! I'm just saying, dude. If you want to be a sensual baby, you've got to really commit to it. You must. Commit. It has that to be the true. full baby experience. <laughs> Man, people do the adult baby thing. Oh, people live for the adult baby mm-hmm. thing, dude. The- it's been a while since I've seen anyone, like... Because it used to be, like, occasionally you get, like, some YouTube channel where it's, like, an advocate for it. Right, it's yeah. It's like, hi, my name's uh, Greg. I'm an adult baby. Mm-hmm. Uh, and this is my very tired-looking wife. <laughs> <laughs> it's sick to do that. I, it's sick when, like, some of those people have children. So it's like, <laughs> it's like you're just... You're basically just, like coercing your wife into slavery because it's like (laughs) even if your kids are no longer baby age the fact that your husband is forcing you to do it and there's not even a chance that he's going to grow out of it Mm -hmm. like there's not even a natural aging process that you can where you can see like a light at the end of the tunnel (laughs) it's just my husband is a baby maybe not seven days a week but even three to five is too much (laughs) you know like you get tuesdays greg (laughs) Yeah, I wonder, uh, I wonder, like, it's crazy when you see, because there are some couples where, like, the lady's into it, Mm -hmm. where she's like, I like it. Yeah, that's such an off-putting kink, but it's impossible to be single and have it. So all these guys have bays. That's fucking true. Holy shit. Yeah. Well, I I mean, if I'm just in my house dressed like a baby. They find you dead. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) They they find you dead like an empty bottle of Windex next to you. (laughs) Yeah, I go too far. Yeah, they got, just find me with a fork in the socket. <laughs> it got into the poison. <laughs> I thought it was fruit punch. <laughs> There's my organ shutting down. Oh my fucking god, that's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> did you just compl- did you just <laughs> babying out so hard that you die of SIDS at thirty eight? <laughs> Just going full, baby. I drown in a bucket of water. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> yeah, man, I wonder. You're, that's a good observation. I, I really... Couples who are like... Couples who meet each other in the middle fetish-wise are wild to me. I guess that's just like... It's just a bond that I don't understand. Mm-hmm. Like, maybe it's beautiful on some level. I don't know. I suppose... Yeah, I've never had, like, a big involved fetish. Right. It's just for, like, somewhat unusual parts of the body. Right, yeah, nothing, not, you've never had anything where you have to, where there's role-playing involved. Yeah, there's where never you're adopting been anything where it's egos. like, all right, let me go get the stuff. <laughs> <laughs> That's when you know that shit is serious when you have, like, an Amazon wish list for, for coming. Oh, my fuck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> like, get the <this> stuff. <laughs> Your kid, like, uh, this is what I would do when I was a kid to like peek at Christmas presents. Mm-hmm. I would just log into my parents' uh, Amazon account, mm-hmm. and the kid's doing that, and he just sees like a, a an XXL romper. Fun. You're like, hmm, huh? Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think I just learned something about my parents too early. Yeah, yeah. 
Man, imagine if you found out that your dad had some sort of really embarrassing kink. Yeah, imagine. That would fucking suck, right? Are you doing this on purpose? <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah, a bonus but, episode, right? <laughs> yeah, but I thought that you would play it off and it would be a private joke between <laughs> us. <laughs> Oh fuck! I really hope my oh man! I really hope my cousin doesn't hear this. That's okay. I don't think he will. Yeah, he probably will. He's very supportive. <laughs> All right. Well, you think your cousin is is one, you think your cousin subscribed to Coil? I don't think so. I think he is. Really? He loves us. Huh. Whatever happens, it's. I mean, it's literally fine. Uh, his sister was literally a famous porn star who, uh, you know, we've. I'm, I guarantee. I mean, she was a porn star. I had never heard of her. You'd never heard of her? No. I remember there was, like, there was specifically one night when I had, like, come home from a party. Oh, man. this Yeah, this has got to be a bonus episode. It is. When I had come home from a party, <clears throat> I was drunk. I was a little... I, well, I was actually pretty high. I, I, I had smoked some pot. This is back when I still smoked pot. Mm -hmm. And I, like, <clears throat> stumbled up to my bedroom and, like, wanted to crank one out before I fell asleep. Oh, yeah. So I just that, put on... <clears throat> that pre-sleep pot crank yep and so Ooh i just boy. i put on like a like just like a, a compilation video of like a bunch of porn stars i didn't i liked whatever girl was in the thumbnail and then midway through i was like melissa and i had to like keep going back and and, I, and like i thought i think i've said this before i thought that i was so high that i was like making it that i was confused but it <laughs> freaked me out enough that I, like, shut the laptop. Oh, yeah, there's no... Once you've seen a family member, there's no coming. Yeah, once you've seen a family member getting railed hard, <laughs> there's there's no coming. But, <clears throat> so, I thought I was high, and then I hadn't seen her in any videos, like, after that. So, I was like, I thought I made it up. And then, years later, I find out that she had actually been doing porn. And I was like, oh, shit. So, I, so 100% that actually happened. And sure enough, it did. Damn. Thankfully, she's not a blood. She's not a blood relative because she was his uh, like stepsister. Fair game. Half sister? No, half sister. She might. No, no, stepsister. Yeah, yeah, stepsister. Well, then it's hot now. Yeah, that's how it works. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You're playing literally. by like the internal porn rules. No, half sister. Mm -hmm. But not blood related to me because I'm not related to his mom. He's only related to his dad. And a different guy. Let me help me do the math here really quick, please. I have to figure this out. And then his mom got knocked up by a different guy that gave birth to her. Okay, I'm, I'm, in, I'm completely in the clear. I'm not crossing any lines. I'm on this side of the Venn diagram. There is no crossover. <laughs> Whew, okay. Well, now you can jerk off to her again. No, don't. I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I am so glad that I've never seen any of my cousins fuck. Yeah, yeah. I plan to keep that streak going. Do you have hot cousins? I don't know. I will pull some pictures up. <laughs> no. Okay. Fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> <laughs> you should have some pictures of your cousins on hand. Why? In case I ask that question. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I don't. I don't have Facebook or anything. Oh, that's true. Well, in your wallet, Brendan, you got to return to the way things used to be. You love that, the way things used to be. I do love the way things used to <clears throat> yeah. be. Yeah. Remember when you said a fucking... Remember when your wallet had a thing that folded out, like, eight ways down of, like, your entire extended family? And I guess you'd, <laughs> what, show that to the cops or something? <laughs> like <laughs> These are the other people you can disappear. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I should get another one of those wallets, and it's just, like, badly photoshopped, like... Me with, it looks like a Tim and Eric Photoshop. Yes. <laughs> Just like me with like this ghastly looking uncanny valley family. Yeah, and they have they all have somebody else's eyes like Photoshopped on. Like. Yeah, yeah, and I just, I show them, to, I show it to girls. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, look, I have a family. Yeah, look how big my family is. And the girls are like, where are they? And you're like, what, why are you, why are you, who asks this many questions? <laughs> just get in the car. Get in the car right now. Don't you want to be part of my huge family? <laughs> yeah. You know what they say about guys with big families? Get in the car. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> yeah. Man, I love telling strange women to get in my car. Yeah. Yeah. This conversation has gone on too long. Get in the car. <laughs> <laughs> Look, the light's green. Yeah. Here's how this works. 
I show you my family, you politely shut your mouth and get in the car. Mm -hmm. It's called having a conversation. (laughs) What happens after you're in the car? Well, that just depends on how things go. (laughs) Depends on what kind of mood we're both in. Yeah. I'll be honest, it's, it's, you know... Do you want to get in my car and smoke some cigarettes with me? (laughs) (laughs) You're shaking a box with, like, two Pall Malls in it? Yeah, last two cigarettes. (laughs) You're actually your last cigarette ever, believe it or not, but... Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) It's so funny to me, like, cigarettes as an active activity. Oh, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, Nick, do you want to come over to my house and smoke cigarettes? Yeah, I could get in, like, uh, if I've been trying to put in, like, eight hours smoking a day. Mm -hmm. Just, like... To get better at it. To get, yeah. Yeah, Yeah. I'm trying to make, uh, I'm trying to make states this year. (laughs) 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 <laughs> that would be so sick. Oh, that was another um, piece of content that uh, no longer exists that I miss so much. These guys in my high school, they started a YouTube channel reviewing cigarettes. What? While they were in high school? <laughs> yeah. That's so fucking funny. It was, that just, is hard as shit, dude. That's so awesome. <laughs> it rolled. Like, they, just, they had like three chairs in a triangle facing one of their laptops. <laughs> and they would go down into one of their basements and just sit in the chairs and smoke cigarettes. <laughs> and like discuss the different flavors they tasted. Oh my fucking God. That's it so funny. It fucking ruled. I love... That should be, like, it's crazy that that's not a popular type of YouTube channel. Like, damn drops or report of the week, but it's just a dude (laughs) chain-smoking, like, limited cigarettes in his car. (laughs) (laughs) I remember, like, uh, they just, the number one was Marlboro Red. Oh, yeah. It's, like, the the most boring choice. Yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's a great cigarette. I loved standing Marlboro Reds when I was... Mm-hmm. When I was a teenager, <laughs> they'd be like, "Man, this Marlboro Light was pretty good, but it's no red. It's no red. It's no Marlboro Red." Yeah, dude, I used to smoke. Uh, I used to smoke American Spirits at the Renaissance Fair because mm-hmm. I, you know, I thought I was like uh, an artist. Uh, yeah, pretty much. I did too. Yeah, d- Americans. I mean, what what color? Yellows. Oh yeah, there's. I started with the yellows, moved up to the. Teals. Oh, you smoke teals? Mm-hmm. Oh my god! But American spirits, like you can't smoke them. What do you mean? Like they don't burn. <laughs> oh yeah, you have to. Like, suck. You got to suck kind of deep. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they like go out, and you have to relight them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I rem- yeah, I remember smoking American spirits with the. Uh, yeah. Oh man, horny days at the Ren Fest. Mm-hmm. I I kind of miss. Smoke it. I don't miss it like I miss drinking. Yeah. Because, I don't know, like, I guess I'm just not wired. Like, obviously, cigarettes are physically addictive. Mm-hmm. But at this point, my body forgets, like, what it actually feels like. Um, but what I do remember is just, like, just, you know, it's like a hot summer day and you're outside. It's just smoking? Just smoking cigarettes on, like, a patio or something. I liked cigarettes in the winter outside of open mics. Oh that was, yeah, that was ideal. Uh, yeah. I mean, winter it sucked, but it was always it always ruled to leave during someone's set and smoke a cigarette and like, especially like an earlier mic where like the sun is still out. Oh yeah, dude. Especially like leave immediately after their first joke to smoke a cigarette. Nothing better than I think in my whole career as an open micer, uh, I never never had my own cigarettes. So I was always just going up to like forty year old comics who, who they really need their cigarettes at the open mic, and I'm like, hey, can I have two of those? Like, <laughs> anyway, what the fuck's your problem? Like, that was how I would just talk to adults. It's the seventeen year old boy at Red House Tavern. It's like, wow, John, you're getting fat. <laughs> like, Smoking both cigarettes. Yes, I was. Yeah, yes, absolutely. Like doing <laughs> bits. Like two drags coughing and then be like, whatever, faggot. And, and then, then flicking like the whole cigarette. Yeah, flicking three fourths of a cigarette down a fucking sewer. <laughs> <clears throat> Just a fucking rat. Total piece of shit. Total piece of shit. I, I, uh, but yeah, dude, what the, what the fuck was I going to say? We were talking about smoking. Oh, oh no. Them being physically addictive. Mm-hmm. I've never, and I've had nights 
where I chain smoked, where I was like smoking cigarette after cigarette after cigarette, like at the, I think like you know a couple of New Year's parties, mm-hmm. um, and I've never been like I've never had an urge like oh gotta have more. I always did it because I thought it looked cool, not because I like needed to. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah, I've also heard that there's some some sort of like interaction with like acid and like like I've heard of a lot of people like do acid and then immediately quit quit smoking. Hmm. So, I guess since I, I think I might have done acid before I smoked cigarettes. So maybe I just, <laughs> yeah, maybe you, um, you erased addiction from your brain except for acid, except for and, acid and other drugs like that. That would actually completely make sense because every drug that I that should be like incredibly addictive. I can do, and then I'm just like, yeah, I don't like even fucking drinking beer. I'm like, yeah, I'll have like one or two, but I don't even need to like. Well, that's normal. That's right. That's everybody but me. Oh, okay, <laughs> that's how people do it. Okay, but other <laughs> but other drugs too. I got like like, yeah. Well, not all not not all other drugs, but I would say eighty percent of drugs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, I just realized I can do the bit on you now. Oh like, yeah. Oh, Nick, don't... I got some acid. I'd be like, really? I'm gonna put it in your eyes. I'd be like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that, the bit's not going to work, because so I'll be like, all right. <laughs> I mean, I didn't do it, do it. And then I would feel really bad. Yeah, I'd make you feel bad. <laughs> I would. You wouldn't feel you'd bad. So, you'd somehow give me a bad trip, <clears throat> yeah, sober. You, you wouldn't feel bad because you would cause me to relapse. You'd feel bad because I would be on a power trip. I would be, <laughs> I'd figure out some way to like attach you to a pedicab and make you take me around town. <laughs> Well, I would just hate that. Yeah, you wouldn't like that at all. And then maybe you'd learn a little lesson. Maybe I would. It's been a while since I've learned a lesson of some kind. And we noticed. (laughs) Everybody's noticed. Oh, damn it. I hate when everyone notices. Everyone notices that you're not... uh... That I'm not improving. (laughs) I hate when I come home and all of my friends are here in a circle. And I'm like, is this an intervention? And you're like, no, actually, you should leave. Yeah. And as, I, as I leave, I hear you go, yeah, he really needs to start learning more lessons. <laughs> Brendan, go out there and don't come back until you've endured a hardship. <laughs> nope. Leave your keys. <laughs> that wouldn't be very hard, would it, if you could sleep in your car? <laughs> How are you going to learn stuff in your air-conditioned car where the radio is? That's true. It's very true. Mm-hmm. You can earn back the radio. Yeah. First AM. Yeah. Then FM. <laughs> then FM. <laughs> but only when you come back with no less than three fables to relay to me. <laughs> Man, I feel like looking back at my life, I mean, I tell so many stories on here of just like horrific lows and nightmare scenarios I put myself in. None of them have a moral. Yeah, uh, I mean, really? I think so. Like, none of them have ever, have anything where, at the end, it's like, and that's when I learned not to this. I mean, besides drink. Yeah, yeah. Uh, really? You know, none of them have, like, any kind of moral, you, like, let's think of one. Let's think of one and see if we can find it. Can you think of, like, a particularly bad, mm. bad instance, and even if it's one we've talked about before? This could be kind of interesting. I don't know. Like, think of one. Like, what, uh, like, the... The mannequin girl, or... Oh, okay, yeah, the mannequin girl. Wait, the girl who had the, uh... All right, so what put you in that situation to begin with? That was that was the girl mm-hmm. where, like... We should summarize it real quick. It might have been a, a deleted, deleted episode. Deleted episode. Oh, the man in the room. That's right. Oh, yeah, the man in the room. Um, we might be able to re-release some of those. Yeah, yeah, we definitely It was, like, can. a special series. But anyways, go on. The man in the room. Yeah. Um. So when I went back to this girl's house, she had a very realistic mannequin, and uh, she made me fuck in the room with the mannequin. With the I mannequin. I got very scared, and there was, a. Uh, some other man in the apartment, and I lost track of where he was. Right. Um, <laughs> I guess I learned not to have sex. The, all right, let's go back. <laughs> we're starting too. We're starting too late in the story, right? Okay. All right. So, what? Why did you feel a need to pursue this girl? Where did you meet her? Okay, Cupid. You met her on Okay, Cupid. What? What? What was the genesis of this interaction? What did you feel you were going to get out of it? I mean, I guess sex, right? I thought I might have sex. Okay, and you or did have sex fall in love why did you feel 
did this stem from like a sense of desperation and loneliness? Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. So and I thought I might have sex because, um, like most mentally ill girls on um, dating sites, um, she had recently had sex mm-hmm. and had told me about it mm-hmm. and how the guy didn't want to hang out with her again afterwards. Right. So for some reason, so just clear, yeah, red flags. All my whole takeaway was like, oh. She's had sex before and might have sex with me. Right. So maybe, Brendan, the lesson is... And she has tattoos. Right. Well, we do love mm-hmm. a tattooed mommy, as we have yeah. said. As, um, when, for me, it's, <clears throat> you know, when we're young. Right. I've grown out of it. You're done with tattoos? I think so, yeah. Oh, I like tattoos. Bay has tattoos. I like them. Uh, my bay does not. Mm, well, mm-hmm. that, that again, that's the difference between you and me. I suppose so. It's a huge difference, all right? <laughs> it's a chasm of difference. And please don't forget, all right, so that's a moral that you can remember, that you, you and I are different, mm-hmm. um, and you're, you'll never be like me. Yeah, that's true. That's great. Uh, no, but with this girl specifically, <laughs> do you think that, so do you think that maybe the moral is, Brendan, that you were looking for, I guess, some kind of like fleeting satisfaction or validation from having sex with this girl, even though you knew... In the back of your mind, you probably knew there was no longevity in this relationship. I think so. But then I also forced longevity. What do you mean? You kept hanging out with her? Yeah. Why'd you do that? Because we had had sex. And uh, I, this was both, it was both out of horniness and out of like, I used to feel guilt about, I didn't think casual sex was like moral. Okay. So I'd be like, oh, well, this, I, okay, I guess that's well, my girlfriend now. This is so complicated. <laughs> this, this, is, you're, this is such a complicated individual you're painting because you're mm-hmm. having the only reason you're fucking this girl. You can probably sense that you're kind of incompatible and that, and that you're not. But mm-hmm. you, but you want to have sex because you're driven by horniness. So like there's not even a – so you're mm-hmm. forcing yourself to commit to a quote-unquote relationship that you don't really believe in just because you had sex once and you can't be honest with yourself or her – because you've decided that it's morally wrong. Yes. Even though even though you're in this for immoral reasons to begin with. Mm-hmm. All right, so there's a, definitely so a lesson. So the moral, Nick? Brendan. <laughs> 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 Maybe the moral is be okay with being alone until you are certain that, that something that's good for you or that you're comfortable with has come along. Yeah, but that's not like a little folksy wisdom. Well, no, life is complicated and messy. <laughs> Come on, we were talking about fables, right? I, you're, you're right. All right, something about yeah. Mm-hmm. I, how can I? We should. Yeah, this that it's not Aesop. And fable remember, enough. kids, what did we learn from the story? Never trust anyone. Very good. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I can't wait to impart wisdom on my children. Right. Mm-hmm. What's yeah? What are some of the more like? What's that? What's that? Fox, crow, and uh, cookie. Is that a fable? I can't remember the. That's the, a puzzle. Or that's a riddle. No. Like the fu- the the wolf, the sheep, and the cabbage? No, no, no. It's not like that. It's okay. it's it's the, the crow. The fox wants... The baker has a cart full of treats. The fox wants them, but he can't. The baker always shoes them off. Um, and the, but the crow is able to get some of the treats, and then the crow has the treats in his beak, and the fox wants the treats, but the crow won't give them up. So he starts to compliment the crow and say... Crow, you're so incredible. Could I please just... Everybody talks about how beautiful your voice is. Could I please just hear one of your songs? And he appeals to the crow's sense of ego. And then the crow starts singing. Cookies fall out of his mouth. Fox catches him. And it's mm-hmm. something to do with hubris or something, right? Mm-hmm. So you learn, don't be full of yourself or else you'll drop your cookies. <laughs> I feel like this. that's a very Nick Oldershaw fable. Do you it's think like, so? If you can emotionally manipulate them, someone... You might be able to take their sweet treats. Yeah, it's actually very funny that I think that that I think the fox is somehow. Yeah, he's the one teaching a lesson in that, even though he's being like duplicitous. <laughs> 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 like from the jump, he's bad. He wants things that are not his. It's not like the good guy is the poor baker who's who's losing product and profit. Yeah, it's the cunning fox, which let's be honest, I greatly identify with. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, I guess, uh, I guess, I guess, yeah, if you're talented, if you're talented, don't flaunt it, because when, yeah, you're right, that is very Nick Oldershaw. Well, that's a fable that I really always stuck with me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, it has, Nick. It's a pretty good tale, I think. 
<laughs> well, not a bad tale. Not a bad tale at all. Yeah, you're right. I guess I can't make uh, heads or tails of whatever happened to you. <laughs> so much so that I think it's actually good, and I think mm-hmm. that that woman was right. I think we're starting to. Um, I think. I think the cast is starting to even out. Like I was talking to Dylan, he was like, "Man, that story about Nick's uncle dying at sea was incredible." And I yeah. was like, "Yeah, Nick's family history is real dark." And then I was like, "Oh, Nick's been the Brendan for some episodes yeah, recently." Absolutely. <laughs> nice. Oh, yeah, I have a, I have a very oh. <laughs> of, of, yeah, you just letting little details slip out and then me reeling in horror. Well, the difference between my family and your family is that there's darkness layered throughout generations of my family. And in your family, you're shouldering all of it. <laughs> yeah, you got you. You're taking all well, the mean, darkness in bulk. If I'm not, I have no way of knowing because nobody tells me anything about our family. That's very true. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Can you think of any? Can you think of where this may have started? Where this crick know, curse may have started? I mean, I had a doctor's appointment yesterday, and she's like, "Now, have any of your?" family members had mental health issues and i was like i think my parents but i don't really know right and she's like you don't know and i'm like they've both alluded to it over the years right yeah <laughs> she's like well do they have depression anxiety and i'm like well one time my dad emailed me an article about how hard it is to be a father when you're an introvert uh- <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. This is a bonus episode, right? Yeah, it's a total bonus episode, dude. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. a shame. It's a good app. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Maybe I'll leak it. Um, yeah, that's a uh, that's weird to email your son that unprompted. It's just like that's mm-hmm. what I would be like to email it. I think he emailed it from China. <laughs> <laughs> Although I will say, I would imagine if you're Charles Crick in China, you're feeling majorly introverted, dude. Just. <laughs> <laughs> just in the middle of a sea of Chinese people just like oh sorry excuse me like, <laughs> my, my dad isn't meek like I am oh he's not but he's introverted no. yeah I guess so he's very quiet um <clears throat> like my dad our conversations we'll have some nice conversations but there's no flow to him it's like yes. he'll introduce a topic and then that'll like he'll introduce a topic I'll respond back to zero. That Bo- makes board wiped clean. That makes sense. That's I introduce a topic, one or two sentence response, board wiped clean. That is very and I don't take this the wrong way, but that seems very that is very crick in nature. <laughs> <laughs> I think I had a I had a similar thing with my dad. Um this and this might be why I even compliment why we compliment each other on the podcast because I'll have conversations with my father where uh, I'll say something and he just doesn't respond. And what I do then is I start filling airtime. <laughs> so <laughs> I just keep the wheels rolling until he, until something passes through the air into his ear that he's able to, to, uh, you know, connect with <laughs> and you know, it's like, it's like, it's like, <laughs> see, I always just look at my phone. Yeah, no, you can't. <laughs> well, I'm gonna have to try that this Christmas. Oh yeah, J- dude, you just gotta keep striking flint until fire starts. Mm-hmm. You gotta wear people down. Yeah. It's gonna be interesting for like Bay to see our dynamic. Mm-hmm. Um, I think my parents feel that way too because last time we were on a Zoom with my parents, uh, my mom she was like, "Oh, and the thing you gotta know about Brendan is he's real dramatic about his childhood. You know, he has all these stories about these things that happened to him." I'm like, "Jesus Christ, we're doing damage control in right se- now, in September." <laughs> Holy fuck, that's so funny. <laughs> yeah, dude, Bay got to meet um, some of my extended family, and it was it was a hit. Mm-hmm. Like like both ways, they loved her, she loved them. That's great. Yeah, man. Bay is um, she's worried about me meeting her um, her like Long Island Italian extended family. Mm-hmm. Um, apparently they're big Trump supporters. Oh boy! And her biggest fear is that I'm going to like get too into it. Ironically, I think. Oh really? Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, no, I'm not gonna be polite or anything. She's like, no, you're gonna start 
calling it gravy and getting too into it. And doing oh, it. being Italian. Yeah, yeah. I thought you meant Trump, and I was like, that's dangerous. It could happen. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> listen to this podcast. <laughs> no, she's just afraid I'm going to, like, uh, just start looking around like, I'm in it. I'm in The Sopranos. <laughs> Which, like, you know, it's fair of her to think that I would. I won't. Right. But that's not... <laughs> That's not like a far fetched assumption of her. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Is that Matt? Uh no, he's gonna be fifteen minutes late, so it's okay, perfect. Cool. Sorry. No, that's okay. Um Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh no, yeah. I mean like <laughs> you don't think that I think that Hey, um hey, can I could you please pass the gabagool? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. With your eyebrows all the way at the top of your forehead while you say it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because <laughs> i I mean i think i've said this before i'm basically like a weeb but for italy completely yeah <laughs> <laughs> not italy italian american yeah. culture <laughs> yeah jersey you're yeah, a yeah. weeb for jersey I'm and long we- island <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah dude a fucking uh it's fun yeah, it would be funny if i went there it like goes exactly how her greatest fear is but like very positively yeah like, like her, her grandfather unprompted is like you know who you remind me of young man and i'm like who and he's like tony soprano <laughs> one of the all-time paisans <laughs> 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 yeah, you'd think that he's yeah. going to tell you, like, a relative or, like, him, and it's like, no, no, yeah. the fictional Italian, Tony Soprano. Mm-hmm. I get out of the pool, and they're like, no, get back in the pool. We're playing Marco Polo. And I, I turn to all everybody else not in the pool, and I go, just when I think I'm out, they pull me right back in. And, and like, oh, and everyone goes, oh, oh. <laughs> da, 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 da. <laughs> For some reason, a terror devil starts <laughs> <laughs> so when it's a big gong yeah. <laughs> a big italian gong <laughs> you hit the gong and goes oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> all right should we wrap yeah, it up, let's wrap it up. <laughs> stuff Knock, knock, open up, it's me, the crazy, shady, faded fucker, so rock the G's. I see a lady make a baby, lead her on in peace. Only time I give a fuck is for, for my, my own release. release. That's why I own these streets. Straight up, portfolio, showing growth, fuck a pay cut. Yeah, you know I stay slut. Catch me in the spot, moving up for the self-suck. Oh, fuck, I busted already. I'm coming bucket so heavy. Fuck my dream so of cream heavy. coming steady. Now my mouth open, I'm ready. I'm talking solo heavy, petting on a Friday, Friday night. night. That's Talking bashing the bishop more like that tugger's delight. I'm Nantucket's taking all the time delight. I need to do it just right. Got my candles in the fishnets cause it's on tonight. Oh, that's right. It's time to fillet. No need to debate. Me, I suck until I go ooh wee and spray my white pee pee. I got that squeeze, squeeze, squeeze.